Hello everyone, my name is Brennan Mars. That noise you're hearing is my gunwave. And welcome to Toronto Thursday on Page Turner's They Were Not My Star Wars podcast. Today we talk about nostalgia. And, well, my friends, today is the beginning of Star Wars celebration in Chicago, Illinois. So, as a tribute to the beginning of Star Wars Celebration, today we're going to talk about recent nostalgia, if such a thing exists, about the build-up to The Force Awakens several years ago. Tomorrow, the Star Wars Episode 9 trailer is sure to be released, as the Episode 9 panel is occurring tomorrow. There are no panels scheduled for celebration today. I would love to be there, but unfortunately I am not there. And definitely tune in tomorrow as I will be giving you my thoughts on both the panel and the teaser. If indeed it comes, and I'm sure it will. And also the title, which I think we'll probably learn in the end of the teaser. We're trying to figure it out tomorrow because I have a doctor's appointment smack dab in the middle of all this. But do not worry, there will be a podcast tomorrow discussing the teaser. So, let's let's jump right in. In 2012, when Disney purchased Lucasfilm, Disney announced on, I believe, that very day that they would be making a new Star Wars trilogy. And I believe in the words, I, I think it was Bob Iger who said this. It would be 30 years after Return of the Jedi. So, I remember going on to Wikipedia right after I learned that. So, to be clear, according to the old Star Wars legends, and indeed the canon, Return of the Jedi takes place four years after the original Star Wars film. Therefore, the new film, Episode 7, which had no title at that point, was to take place 34 years after the Battle of Yavin, or ABY. That was the battle in the original Star Wars film when the Death Star was destroyed. That is used as the starting point for both the Legends and the Canon Calendar. So, I went on to Wikipedia, and I looked up what happened 34 years after the Battle of Yavin, according to the Legends. Alright, let me read you what it says. Jason Solo began his training with the Baron Doe and the learned Anya Seth, I'm probably pronouncing this wrong, and other Hasseldur, Hasseldur techniques from the Master of the Order, Koro Z. I have no idea what that means, but I was just going to read it. Now, Jason Solo. He's basically the Ben Solo of the Legends. In Star Wars Legends, Han and Leia, of course, were married and had twin children, Jason and Jaina Solo, a boy and a girl. Later, they had their third child, Anakin Solo. And these kids, basically were to become 
in many ways the lead characters of many future Star Wars projects. And indeed they were. The characters were invented in 1992, I believe, from Timothy Zahn's second book in the Thrawn trilogy, Dark Force Rising. If I do not believe that they were born until then, I may be wrong. Anyhow, so basically that was the only event that had occurred 34 years after the Battle of Yavin. Uh, in other words, a very blank spot. Now, I was never troubled about how they were to handle it. Because I knew that they were not going to stick close to the legends if they wanted to tell a story. Uh, many fans were under the impression that Star Wars Legends material, which is just called the Expanded Universe, would be incorporated into the new trilogy. Now, the reason that blank spot in the calendar is significant is because in that year, you could tell a story that had not been covered um, in any Legends books. But you would have to incorporate lots of material in order to have it fit with all the Legends. And in many ways that would handicap with storytellers, they would have to take into account the use on Vong, the Dark Nest Crisis, the death of Anakin Solo, you know, the, the so many things they would have to keep in mind when writing a script. Now, is it impossible? No, it wasn't impossible. But it would basically tie their hands and make it so they couldn't tell a proper story. But I remember just the excitement that was in the air about the new movies. And it, there were so many speculations about what could it be about, what could the story be. And I think that I don't recall myself having any like laundry list of what I wanted to see because I had not actually read that much legend material. I uh I, I think about three years ago I read a lot of the Legends books, like the Jedi Academy Trilogy, the, uh, you know, the Black, I started the Black Fleet Crisis, the, the one Han Solo Trilogy, not when he was younger, but when he was, uh, having that conflict with his brother, basically the Carillion Crisis, or, I'm sorry, not his brother, his cousin. And, and other things. But I read a lot of the books that I had not read before. But when, but back in the day when they announced Episode 7, I was rather ignorant. I knew the events, because I read a lot of the chronology and the encyclopedias. But I had never actually read the books, so I didn't have an emotional attachment to them. So I didn't have a list of oh, I want to see this story, and I want to see this story, I want to see this part of the stuff that had already been written. 
but I didn't really have a list of that. I was excited, but I figured that they weren't going to follow that stuff anyway. So in April of 2014, when they announced that they would not be following that material because it would all be declared Star Wars Legends, I know many fans were upset. But I was not, because I had already figured they would do that. And I like what Timothy Zahn, the author of the Thrawn trilogy, said. He was totally okay with it, because he said it's the only way that they could tell the story they want to. And this is coming from the guy who basically invented Star Wars Legends back when it was the expanded universe. So, I remember thinking that it would probably incorporate some material from the Legends. And when we started to see our first images, I figured that Kylo Ren was probably Han and Leia's son. But I also thought that Ray was probably his twin sister, and that they too, those two, were the canon equivalents of Jason and Jane Saul. Turned out I was only half right. As Kylo Ren slash Ben Solo is basically Jason Solo. So, I was very pleased with their decision that they would be declaring all that stuff legends, but that they would cherry pick what they wanted to incorporate in their story. And I believe, believed then and still believe that that was their best course of action. Star Wars Legends is full of some amazing stuff. And also some really crappy stuff. That is not to say that the canon also doesn't have those problems. But I just remember just how excited I was for new Star Wars movies. I, I didn't make a list of what I wanted to see. At least when they first announced the film. Later, as the films started to get closer, I did, unfortunately, I think, set myself up for so many things. Because I remember when I first saw The Force Awakens, I was disappointed, and I think it's because all the anticipation was over with. You know, that feeling of when you, you've been excited for something for so long, and finally it comes. Now, it didn't meet my expectations, true. But then again, it would never have been able to. I think that my chief concern was that I, I wasn't expecting it to be so similar to the original film. Now, after seeing it many more times, I began to love it even more. And admittedly, yes, I still think it's a little bit too close to the original film. But nonetheless, I still think it's a good film. And I tried very hard not to make a list of what I wanted to see in the movie. And for the most part, I succeeded. But I don't think it was my expectations that were not met. It was my feeling of all the waiting had paid off with a movie that, while extremely good, was unwilling to take a lot of risks. Yes, killing off Han Solo is not taking a risk in my book. 
because I think most fans knew that was coming. I kind of miss those days of, of excitement. Of uh, between 2012 and 2014, very little information was available about what the new movies would be about. And so it was basically an open playing field where our imaginations could run wild. And that was fun, and I do miss those days. I love what we got, but I, I certainly enjoy that feeling of anticipation, that feeling of unbridled imagination. Which I think right now is what we're feeling about episode 9. Very little information is available. And so tomorrow, we'll finally see something concrete, and that's great. But I think, just like how I miss those days of unbridled imagination of the Force of Awakens, Part of me is going to miss the unbridled open playing field of speculation for Star Wars Episode 9. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Brendan Marr. That noise hearing is my ventilator, and thank you for listening to Thread to Thursday on Page Turners They Were Not, my Star Wars podcast. You can follow me on Twitter at Brennan Blue. That's B R E N N E N B L U E. You can follow me on YouTube at Tasty Waffle. And if you like this podcast, please subscribe. May the horse be with you.